Just real quick, anything new with Daniel and Shaw? Yeah, I think they're out there taking a bunch of mental reps, um, you know, but I don't know. They're pretty doubtful for the game. We'll, we'll see how, how it kind of progresses throughout the week, but they're both, uh, both out there taking a bunch of mental reps. Uh, if they can't go, uh, Tyrone going to be in that strong safety spot again? Absolutely. I mean, TJ's here for a reason. We brought TJ in and he stayed the course throughout the whole season. You know, things haven't always gone his way, but he stayed ready and, you know, he's going to play great in a big moment in this game. And I know he'll be prepared and ready to go. And then in terms of Shaw, just kind of an uptick in guys like Chris Jackson, Caleb Ford DeMent. Yeah, same, same type of deal. Those two guys came here for a reason and to play. And, you know, Chris got, I think, 40-some snaps last week. So that was good to see him out there and, and see him play well. Uh, Caleb was a little sick last week. He's been full go this week. So we trust all those guys. And like I said, competition brings out the best in all of them. And, and they've competed all year and, and they're ready for their opportunity. How beneficial is it to have, you know, the guys go down and just have these veterans, you know, from other division one programs and guys who have been playing at all conference levels at other places, be able to step in and, and kind of come into these roles. Well, I think it's important. I think it was part of the plan. We needed depth in the secondary and we've been razor thin and we've lost some guys. And, you know, this is probably, you know, one of the few times I know after Utah state game, we were banged up a little bit, but we've been pretty healthy throughout the year. So this is football. These things will happen and guys got to stay ready to go and being a backup, can be one of the hardest things on the team, um, but these guys have stayed ready for their moment and they're going to get it. And then kind of switching gears here, just uh, notice yesterday there was the tweet from the, the football page about, uh, I think it was Luke Holcomb, Alec Eckert, and Josh Meredith being the scout team players of the week. Um, just kind of looking back over the season, is there one or two guys on the scout team that have really, really consistently impressed you? Um, you know, and I see the offensive scouts. I don't get a chance to see the defensive scout guys. Um, but I know uh, just hearing from our offense, David Gusta is one that is consistently praised by those guys and how he plays and how disruptive he is and how physical he is up front. So he's that's exciting to hear because that'll be really needed uh, heading into spring ball for him. Uh, then on our side, um, Ryan Peters has been really exciting. He, you know, he was injured early in the season, but has come back and really thrived. And it's really hard for our guys to to uh, handle in the slot. He's been very positive. Um, trying to think who else would really stick out. Uh, Dylan Page or Dylan Payne. Um, he's one that does a good job for us consistently at the tailback position. That really stands out for us weekly. And Jack Wilson has been one that has constantly gotten better throughout the season. Remember, Jack was just a basketball player. So every rep, he's learning, he's growing, and he's getting better. And excited to see where he can take his game. Thanks, Coach. Good luck Friday. Thank you, Jamie. All right, Coach. Uh, next one's going to be Scott Hansen from the Seattle Times. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Coach, I read last year that a, a clock was put in the locker room, a countdown to the Apple Cup. Was that still there this season? It still is. Uh, we have two of them. We have one up in the uh, offices uh, by our staff that we get a chance to look at and one down here in the locker room uh, that our players get to look at daily. I mean, I know that you, you don't want to make too big of a deal of this game, but obviously that ma makes a point to these guys. This is a really important deal. Yeah, it's an important game. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's just there, there's a focus to it. But you want to win rivalry games, there's got to be a greater commitment. And I think that's what that clock represents is we got to be committed daily so what are we doing to try to win this game? And not just game week, okay? What are we doing 365 days a year to compete? Uh, and that's what those things, you know, represent for our program. As, as a coach, do you get more amped at all? Do you have to keep yourself from getting too amped up in a rivalry game? Is, he, is, it, is it, can you get caught up into it yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm amped up all the time, you know? So, at, you know, these games, you know, I, I never try to get too high, too low. I try to stay consistent. My work habits, my mindset, my energy, so I, I, I'm i just an amped up guy, you know, kind of as it goes through it. So I try to keep myself calm regardless of the situation. And that'll be the same thing on Friday. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach, a couple more. Uh, next one, go ahead, Colton Clark, folks in review. Morning, Coach. How's it going? Morning, Colton. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Uh, so you talked a little bit about Washington secondary yesterday. Um, They got the McDuffie, Gordon. I know they're two of the best corners uh, in the league. Uh, those guys be matched up against the slots? Well, they haven't been, you know, so that'll be something that we'll be tracking early throughout the game and how they're going to control their matchups. And, you know, but it's hard when you, when you rotate, you know, great cover guys inside, sometimes you're advertising that you're going to play man. So how do they mix that up? Man zone. 
you know, so we'll see, and that'll be something that we'll track early and how they're going to control the matchups and how they're going to try to, you know, eliminate some of the success that we've had on the inside slot receivers. And just on that, uh, Travell and Calvin, obviously, you know, two of the most prolific guys mm -hmm. in the Pac-12, uh, especially shining here kind of last down the stretch. Uh, them being kind of top three in the pack and yards, touchdowns, it, it, is that something that that's maybe a little surprising just – seeing the production that they both have no, you know no not really cold not, i just think that's the way our offense is really designed and you know those are tough matchups we you get those guys on nickels i mean when we go against them they get them on our strong safety you know those are challenging matchups to try to you know mix up the mans the zones the pressure looks so you know we're designed to get those guys open and then on the edges to be able to take the top off and make sure we're trying to get over the top of a bunch of things so you know, and, and, you know, just those two, but we're talking Lincoln, we're talking Joey, we're talking a lot of guys that have a lot of production on the inside that have, you know, been ready for their moment and will, con will continue to shine. We saw yesterday, uh, Halit Brill uh, kind of announced on Twitter that he was going to go into the transfer portal. It Was that a surprise that happened? Were, were there some conversation go conversations going back with you guys? I think there's always conversation. I'm proud on a proud of HD because he's going to be getting his degree this fall and he's searching another opportunity and, and we support him and wish him the best. And, uh, you know, veterans like Max and, and Jihad Justice, Travell, guys who've played in, in, in lots of these games, um, just from what you've seen the last couple of days, how are they kind of handling this week and, and, and leading the guys? What, have they said, said anything you've heard about, about the rivalry to, to the younger guys? You know, and we addressed it kind of a little bit in our first uh, meeting on Sunday, just about how we wanted to approach it as a group. You know, I think the old guys are really setting the tone for the practices and, and how we need to prepare. You know, but we haven't gotten into, you know, this or that or playing there, you know, or nostalgia stuff. They're just focused on what 2021 team can do to try to be 1-0. and And that's the focus of the whole week and the whole purpose. So haven't asked them, you know, to, to tell those guys that either, you know, but at the same time, we know it's going to be a tough environment. We know it's going to be on the road. We know it's probably going to be raining. You know, we just got to control the things that we can control. And that's our attitude, our effort, our focus, and our technique. So that's really the mindset of the week right now. Thanks, Coach. Have a good one. Thank you. All right, Coach. Uh, last one's going to be Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Tim. Morning, Jake. Um, good morning. I, I was wondering, do you have a, a favorite, um, you know, rivalry game memory from one of your previous um, opportunities that sort of sticks out? Man, there's a couple. I, so I've been in the Dakota marker, South Dakota State, North Dakota State. Uh, we went into the Fargo Dome, which if you know anything about the Fargo Dome, 19,000 people, it's the loudest place I've ever played. You can't, I mean, I can't even hear you, you know, you sitting there talking to me and we won it on a last second touchdown, a fade. Jake Winicky, I still know it, uh, catching the ball in the corner of the end zone and that place went quiet uh, and it was fun. Uh, now they got the last laugh. They beat us in the playoff game. Uh, and then at Wyoming, uh, we played for the, uh, the bronze boots. Uh, that was Wyoming, Colorado State. And I was 3-0 and in those games. Uh, one of them was a snow game, just like it was outside today. Uh, Josh Allen rallied us down the field to, to win a, uh, a touchdown late in that game in a snow globe game. So had a couple of really fun rivalry memories, and, and those two really stand out to me. And then sort of a big picture thing for you. How would you sort of encapsulate or describe what these last five weeks have been for you having this opportunity and, and I guess pulling together the team as you have and had the kids respond the way they have. Well, I think it's true. You know, I'm truly honored and, and truly humbled, right. To get an opportunity to lead this team. Uh, I just, when I look through what the players have, have given me, and I've said millions of times, I don't know if I can give them enough, you know, it's been hectic. It's been a little bit crazy, but we've stayed together. And I think the biggest thing that unites our guys is what I just saw is on the field. You know, they have a passion for this game. They have a passion for each other and they have a huge passion to finish what they've started. And that's senior led and senior driven. So it's been hard to really process what, you know, even I've been through um, or what our family's been through. But at the same time, we're just here and we're giving this everything we have.